Hi guys, we're, show, we're given a PV diagram showing an ideal gas going through a cyclic process, taking it from state A to state B to state C to state D and back to state A. So we're given all the information we need here on the right hand side in steps 1, 2, 3, and 4. So for the first step, the monatomic gas compresses adiabatically from A to B, which is this portion of the PV diagram. A to B, doubling its pressure from 100 pascals to 200 pascals and decreasing its volume from 3 meters cubed to 1 meter cubed. Now on to step 2. The gas expands isobarically from B to C, which is this part of the PV diagram B to C, quadrupling its volume where the temperature also increases by 150 Kelvin. Step 3. The gas then undergoes an isochoric process from C to D returning to its initial pressure and C to D is this process right here on the PV diagram and also it increases temperature by 50 Kelvin and finally step 4 the gas compresses isobarically from D to A which is this part of the PV diagram returning to its original volume and decreasing in temperature by 127 Kelvin for simplicity's sake let's assume it's only one mole of gas undergoing the cyclic process and notice these white arrows on the graph represent the path of the cyclic process. It's going in a counterclockwise, uh, counterclockwise, or sorry, it's going in a clockwise direction from A to B, B to C, C to D, and D to A. Where we're asked to find the total work done on the gas during each step, meaning the total work done in step one, the total work done in step two, and in step three and step four and also to determine whether heat was added or released for that step. But before we get, begin, let's go over some review. So always keep in mind that for a cyclic process, delta U equals Q plus W, or the change in internal energy equals heat plus work. And this term always equals zero, because when you're going in a cyclic process in a PV diagram, you always start and end the same place you began. For this problem, we're going to focus on the work done on the gas, not by the gas. But do remember that the work done on the gas is the same quantity as the work done by the gas, but one's positive and one's negative. Also, keep the ideal gas law in mind, where PV equals NRT, or pressure times volume equals the number of moles times the gas constant times temperature. We'll need this later in the video to help solve for T. Okay, so how many steps or processes are there? Well, we know that the first one is an adiabatic process from A to B. And the common characteristic about adiabatic process is that there's no heat exchange. So Q equals zero. This reduces our delta U expression to delta U equals W, or the change in internal energy just equals work. And to calculate work for an adiabatic process, W, or work, equals P1 times V1 minus P2 times V2 over gamma minus 1, where P1 V1 are the initial pressure and volume of the gas, and P2 V2 are the final pressure and volume of the gas. But what's gamma? Well, remember we're dealing with the monatomic gas. And for a monatomic gas, gamma is always 5 thirds. It's just a ratio. And do remember that gamma is different for a monatomic gas than it is for a diatomic and so on. Uh, do notice that I'm not showing you guys the way I derive these equations. I'm just throwing in the equations just for time's sake. If you're interested in finding out where this equation came from or where this equation came from or any of the other equations in this video, feel free to Google it or check Wikipedia because they have a really good derivation on there. Okay, so the next process is from B to C, which is an isobaric process. So for an isobaric process, the common characteristic is that it's constant pressure. We're still given the same equation for delta U as we were in the start, where delta U equals Q plus W. But W, or work, for an isobaric process is P times V, or P times delta V, which is the pressure times the change in volume. Q for an isobaric process is Q equals N times 5 halves times R times delta T, 
where Q is the heat, N is the number of moles, R is the gas constant, delta T is the change in temperature. And remember, this is for monatomic gas only. If this was a diatomic gas or triatomic or polyatomic, this number right here would change because it corresponds to the degrees of freedom of the molecule. But since we're dealing with monatomic, it's this expression right here. Okay, what about the next process? It's an isochoric process taking the gas from step C to step D. And for an isochoric process, there's no change in volume. So W, or work, equals zero. Because remember, for an isochoric process, the PV diagram is uh, depicted by a straight or vertical line. And since there's no area underneath the curve for a vertical line, work equals zero. Because the area underneath the curve on a PV diagram represents work. But since there's no area, there's no work. So W equals zero. This reduces delta U to Q, or delta U equals Q, since W equals zero. Then, Q, or heat, for an isochoric process of a monatomic gas equals N times 3 halves times R times delta T, or the number of moles times 3 halves times the gas constant times the change in temperature. And keep in mind, this is for a monatomic gas. But since we're dealing with the monatomic gas, it's perfect because we're going to use this. Okay, and now the final process. Again, it's an isobaric process taking the gas from step D to step A. And for isobaric process, remember it's constant volume again. So we still have this equation where delta U equals Q plus W, or the change in internal energy equals heat plus work. And work for an isobaric process is still the pressure times the change in volume. And Q is still the number of moles times 5 half times the gas constant times the change in temperature. All right, since we know each one of the processes, let's get to work. No pun intended. <laughs> All right, step one. Back to the PV diagram. A monatomic gas compresses adiabatically from A to B, doubling its pressure from 100 pascals to 200 pascals and decreasing its volume from 3 meters cubed to 1 meter cubed. And step one is shown in this part of the PV diagram. Notice as it goes from A to B, pressure increases and the volume decreases. Okay, so the gas is getting compressed, so something must be doing work on it. Thus, work is positive. Remember, the gas is getting compressed, so the volume is decreasing as it goes from A to B. And if it's getting compressed, there must be something pushing on the gas to do, or doing work on the gas. So, since there's something doing work on the gas, work is positive. Thus, returning to our equation for work for an adiabatic process, where work equals P1 times V1 minus P2 times V2 over gamma minus 1, if we plug in our missing variables, and carry out this calculation, we get that the work for uh, from A to B equals 150 joules. And this is positive since the work is being done on the gas is positive because something must be pressing against it or pressing on it. But what about heat? Well, remember this is an adiabatic process so there's no heat exchange. Heat is zero. That's a common characteristic of an adiabatic process. There's no heat exchange. So Q just equals zero joules. All right, on to step two. The gas expands isobarically from B to C, quadrupling its volume, where the temperature increases by 150 Kelvin. So as the gas expands isobarically from B to C, notice that the pressure stays constant, but the volume increases. The gas is expanding, but there is nothing pushing against it, so work must be negative. There is nothing pushing on the gas. So if there is nothing pushing on the gas, there is nothing doing work on the gas. And if there is nothing doing work on the gas, uh, the work done is negative. So returning back to our equation for work for an isobaric process, where W equals the pressure times the change in volume, Plugging in our missing variables, where p equals 200, because it's constant from step one, and 
quadrupling the volume from step one makes it four, and the initial volume of step one is one, so four minus one, and carrying out this calculation equals 600 joules. However, if you carry out the calculation for this 200 times four minus one, it's a positive value, but we know that the work done is negative. So this is a conceptual um, relation you have to make. If the work done is negative, but you're getting a positive answer, you know, just switch signs and make it negative. So the work done is actually negative 600 joules. And what about heat? Okay, did the temperature increase, decrease, or remain the same for this process? And remember when I told you to remember the ideal gas law? Well, solving for T in the ideal gas law, we get T equals PV over NR. And since P is constant for our isobaric process, and V increased, that means our term for T increased because R is just a constant and the number of moles is con uh, constant also. So if P is constant, V increases, our term for T increases. So that means heat is added to this process for step uh, two from B to C. So if heat is added, heat is positive. In carrying out the equation for heat for isobaric process, we get heat, or Q, equals the number of moles times 5 halves times the gas constant times uh, the change in temperature, which is 1 times 5 halves times 8.31 times 150, because we were given this right here, 150 kelvins. Carrying out this calculation actually gives a pretty large number. It gives us 3,116.25 joules, positive. Okay, on to the third process, or the third step. The gas then undergoes an isochoric process from C to D, returning to its initial pressure and changing in temperature by 50 Kelvin. So as it goes from C to D, the volume is constant, but the pressure is going down. And since there's no area underneath this curve from C to D, we know that work is zero. It has constant volume. It's a characteristic. It's a common characteristic of an isochoric process. So work equals zero joules. But what about heat? Well, let's ask the same question: Was the temperature, or did the temperature increase, decrease, or remain the same? Using the ideal gas law, where T equals PV times NR, if V is constant, but pressure is going down, that means heat was taken out, or heat decreased, because temperature went down. So, heat does release, because the temperature went down. So, plugging in to our equation for heat for an isochoric process, where Q equals N times 5 halves, times r times delta t, we get heat equals 1 times 3 halves times 8.314 times 50. But do remember that carrying out this calculation on your calculator, it will give you a positive number. But since we know heat is released, we can just go ahead and add that negative sign. And we know that it's negative 623.25 joules of heat. All right. Final process, step four. Finally, the gas compresses isobarically from D to A, returning to its original volume and decreasing in temperature by 127 kelvins. So, we know that if the gas compresses isobarically, it's constant pressure, and the gas is getting compressed, as we mentioned earlier, that means something must be doing work on it. So if something is doing work on the gas, the work done on the gas is positive. Okay. Returning to our equation for work for an isobaric process, we know work equals P times delta V, which is 100 times 1 minus 4, which equals negative 600 joules. But do remember that work is positive, so this negative term is actually positive 600 joules. The work done from D to A is positive 600 joules. Remember, that's a conceptual idea. Just think, is the work done on the gas positive or negative? And if you get something different by plugging it in the equation, just remember, conceptually. 
okay what about heat and same thing we did before did the temperature increase decrease or remain the same so using the ideal gas law T equals PV over NR so in this case P was constant but the volume decreased as it went from D to A so if the volume decreased that means our term for T or temperature decreased so if temperature goes down heat is released so plugging in our equation for Q where Q equals N times 5 halves times R times delta T we get 1 times 5 halves times 8.31 times negative 127 which does give us a negative number so we don't have to worry about the conceptual idea here but do keep it in mind never forget that so our answer for heat is 2638.425 joules okay so going back to our ideal uh, gas process in the PV diagram we can now show the total work done for each step because we just calculated so remember for step uh, 1 from A to B there is 150 joules of work done and no heat exchange so heat was 0 or Q was 0 and from B to C which is this part of the PV diagram we calculated the work done to be negative 600 joules and since heat was added we had positive 3116.25 joules of heat now C to D for C to D it was an isochoric process where uh, the volume didn't change and no work was done so work equals zero and the heat was released meaning uh, the heat done from C to D was or the heat from C to D was negative 623.25 joules and finally from D to A we have 600 joules of work done and heat was released so we have negative 2638.425 joules so there you go we have managed to calculate the work done for each step and whether the heat was released or added to the system for that step. Good job.